Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at 35mm point-and-shoot cameras. So point-and-shoot cameras are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're just simple, easy-to-use cameras that really just allow you to kind of point and shoot. There's no fine tuning of your exposure settings. There's no complicated film loading or threading or anything crazy like that. They're just simple cameras. So let's take a look at what you might find in a point and shoot camera when you come across one so that you can kind of figure out what it's capable of doing and kind of what you can use it for. So these guys are all automatic and that's really the beauty of a point and shoot. They have built-in light meters which means that they will automatically determine the exposure settings for you when you're taking a picture. So you don't have to worry about shutter speed and apertures and any of this sort of stuff. Now because point and shoot cameras have these built-in automatic exposure components it also means that all these cameras need power in order for you to use them. So really, for a point shoot camera, I like to be able to look for cameras that will just take AA batteries. AA batteries are super easy to find and they're really easy for you to get your hands on some in case of an emergency if your batteries die and you just need to be able to grab some batteries in order to get that camera going again. And now besides the AA battery, there are a lot of cameras that will also take these smaller, somewhat harder to find batteries sometimes. You can get ones that are CR2 batteries and CR123 batteries. And they're just slightly more awkward to find and usually much more expensive than just a simple AA battery in order for you to pick up and start using those cameras. So really just having a camera that runs on AA batteries is something that I really like to have mainly out of convenience. But those CR123 batteries are still batteries that you can pick up in a lot of places. So you're not really stuck if you pick up one of these cameras that takes a more obscure battery than a AA. And you need those batteries loaded into these cameras, which is different from, say, a mechanical SLR camera that will be able to be used without batteries inside of them. It's also really a good idea to kind of be inspecting the camera thoroughly when you're looking to buy one. So especially pop open the film compartment door and kind of take a look inside. You want to make sure that there's really no visible damage to the back of the lens. You really want to make sure that you have the pressure plate here because sometimes those pieces can fall off because in these point and shoot cameras they're just kind of plastic easy to lose pieces. The film compartment is also where you can find your DX code pins. Now I've talked about how DX coding works on automatic cameras before on a previous video which you can find on the channel but ultimately it's a series of contact pins that will tell your camera what kind of film ISO you're putting into it. That way these automatic point and shoot cameras will know exactly what you're shooting and then that way they can be able to auto expose the film correctly. The more pins in the film compartment means the wider number of films that it can auto detect. So keeping an eye on that when you're buying a point and shoot camera gives you just a better idea about how versatile this camera is going to be, especially if you like to shoot a nice wide variety of film stocks. Now we can take a look at some of the other really common features that you'll find in just most standard point and shoot cameras. So the majority of point shoots out there have a built-in flash inside of them, which makes them really versatile and you can take them to parties or you can be out at night. A lot of them will have a button to override the flash, which means that if you're in a really bright situation, then you can press that down or switch that on and use that instead. So then the camera will just use all the available light and not have to rely on the flash. Some of these cameras will also have the ability to fire kind of a pre-flash in order to avoid red eye in your photos. Point shoots will also have autofocus built into them. So you don't have to manually figure out the focus on your lens and make sure that everything is sharp. Now many of them will also have a minimum focus distance of about four feet, which is safe to use for the flash and everything. But some of these cameras do have options for a closer focus distance on them. And it's usually just a little switch or something that you can enable. And then you can get closer to the subject that you're taking a picture of. But of course, if you're getting super close to it, then that's when you do not want to use the flash on the camera because it will just be overpowering at the close distance that you're at from your subject. And besides that, you might also have just a simple built-in timer as well, which a lot of them will just have by using this symbol on the top of them. Some of them have automatic rewind so that when you reach the end of the roll you're shooting, it will know based on the tension and how many photos it's taken. And it will automatically rewind the film back into the canister without you having to do 
do anything. Many of them will also have a manual rewind option on them, which is usually just a little button signified with this symbol. That way you can press that down and you can rewind a roll even if you're not all the way through it. You might also get cameras that are advertised as being panoramic, which I've also looked at previously in a video on the channel about real panoramic cameras versus fake 35 millimeter panoramic cameras. But a lot of these cameras do offer a panoramic mode on them, which really is just a mask that slides into place over top of your image and crops your photo. Point and shoot cameras like these will have a fixed lens on the front of them. This just means that you have a set focal length on the lens. So it's not too zoomed in and it's not super wide. It's really just a nice little medium field of view for you to use for all your photos. But there are a lot of point and shoot cameras out there that have built-in zoom lenses on the front of them as well. So this camera, for example, can go from that kind of nice medium field of view to a much more zoomed in one. And that's just controlled by a little switch or sometimes a slider on the camera. And as you zoom in and out, the field of view will also change in the viewfinder. So you know exactly what the lens is seeing for you to capture. And that really just kind of comes down to your own personal preference about what you want to be able to shoot and how versatile you want your little camera to be. It can be a little hard with point and shoot cameras in order to evaluate what's really worth shooting and what's really Really worth passing on when you come across one. It is always a good idea to be able to kind of check them out when you come across them and just kind of feel the quality of the build of the camera. But it's also a pretty good idea to keep an eye out for pretty well-known brands. Ones like Canon and Yashica and Minolta and Pentax are all a little bit more common than some of these wild, crazy, cheap off-brand 35 millimeter cameras that came out over the years. Sometimes you'll come across really clunky old school ones as well, like this Kodak medalist from the 80s. This one's a little chunky and it's not necessarily the best option. It does take a bit more of an obscure, strange battery to it and it's ultimately maybe not the best, especially if you're looking for something that's a little more uh, sleek. Many, many point shoot cameras also have the ability to date stamp your image, which means that they have a little LED on the back of the film compartment. So every time you take a picture, then it will date stamp your image down in the bottom corner. Now I can't talk about 30 35 millimeter point and shoot cameras without bringing up the aspect of hype. Right now, especially in the past few years, as 35 millimeter photography, especially for amateurs, has seen a bit of a, well, resurgence. There are a lot of different 35 millimeter point and shoot cameras that have kind of risen to the forefront of people looking for ones to buy. And these are ones that are really hyped up and a lot of people seek them out and their prices have skyrocketed in the past five years especially. So if you were to go look up point and shoot cameras right now, a lot of websites are just going to have compiled lists about the best 35 millimeter point and shoot cameras out there right now for you to buy. And these are cameras like the Olympus Stylus and the Epic and the Contax T2 and T3 and the Yashica T4. And don't get me wrong, these cameras are really nice and they give you really good results, but they're also cameras that typically right now will run you hundreds of dollars and are increasingly overpriced for what they really are. My recommendation is just to go to vintage thrift stores and just to take a look around and don't get sucked into paying too much for one of these cheaper cameras, especially if you're just really looking to get into 35 millimeter for the first time. So as you can see, just from these examples that I have in front of me, none of these cameras are super crazy or expensive, but they're all nice and little and compact. That's really what I would want from a 35 millimeter point and shoot camera. I have a couple of Canon Sure Shots here that they made lots and lots of different models for that are always fun to kind of have at parties. I have a nice little Bell and Howell here that has a bunch of different little fun features on it, like a double exposure function that you don't find on a lot of cameras. There's a Canon WP-1 and these really stylish, funky looking cameras are actually uh, watertight with a special watertight ceiling around the inside of the film compartment. So keep an eye out for these little cameras and you know, pick them up if you see them and they feel good and you just wanna play around with something. Whether you're at a beach or a music festival or just at a party or just hanging out with people, point and shoot cameras are really just the ultimate way to be able to use 35 millimeter film in a huge variety of situations and and just be able to have fun with them. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching and checking this out and subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to talk about different film formats and cameras and just all this gear and history. And there is a link in the description down below to the Analog Resurgence Patreon and you can hop over there and check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel and being able to help me do more of this stuff and focus on a variety of topics and stuff in the future.
And if there's any stuff in the future that you want to hear me talk about, whether it's film photography or motion picture stuff or Polaroids or instant stuff, whatever, then just let me know down in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon.